Hi Mad Fans, today's video is part of an online course that I tutor for Oxford University. Um, I thought I'd put it on the YouTube channel just so that more people can access it and if you're interested in the Oxford course you can type into Google Oxford Continuing Education and GIS and if you Google that you should see Introducing Mapping Spatial Data and GIS Online. If you go to that page, you can see the course summary. So if you'd like to book on this course, please do. Um, it does run for 10 weeks and it's kind of self-paced, uh, but we do expect you to have each practical done by the end of the week. Uh, you can see all the information on the side here. So if you're interested in that, um, please look it up and sign up. Any questions, feel free to ask me. Matt fans, let's take a look at georeferencing in QGIS 3. I've got a blank project here and the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a base map so that we can have a look at our area of interest. So if I go up to view, go to panels and go to browser and then scroll down to XYZ tiles. If you don't know how to get XYZ tiles loaded up, don't worry about it. I've got a video for that. So just follow that and you'll be up to speed. So I'll drop Bing Earth in here and there's the world. Fantastic. Now my area of interest is going to be White and Woods today, which is in Oxford. And I do have a shape file that's in that area. It's just a linear track that I recorded while I was there. I'll add that in. The only reason for adding this in is actually just to zoom to it so that I can find my area of interest and boom, there it is. Okay, so I can turn off that shapefile now and here's White and Woods in all its glory. Now what I want to do next is add in the raster that is going to be geo-referenced. So I will do that and there we have it. I'll add that in. It's going to ask me what CRS I would like. Now I'll just go back a bit here actually and show you because I added in Bing Virtual Earth Bing Virtual Earth is a web layer, it's in pseudo Mercator, and so our project is going to have its CRS set to 3857 pseudo Mercator. Reason for that being is that the first layer you bring in will set the project CRS for you. So if we bring in the Whiteham Aerial Photo, it's going to ask what CRS we want for that, and it'll be the same as the project, it just defaults to that. As we have no CRS for this layer at the moment, if I zoom to this layer, it's in the middle of nowhere. In fact, it's in the middle of the ocean and QGIS is having difficulty drawing it. Not surprising really, because we don't know where in the world it is. And that's the whole point of georeferencing. So if we use our little shape file, just to zoom back to our area of interest, then the next thing I need to do is make sure that I've got the georeferencing plugin installed. To check if we've got the plugin installed, I'll go up to plugins and manage and install plugins. And if you just type up here georef and you can see that georeferencer GDAL is available. And in QGIS 3, this is now a core plugin, so you cannot install it. I'm just going to put that check mark next to it. OK, that and close out. Now, if you want to find the georeferencer, it's quite logical. It's up in raster and you just go to georeferencer. Click on that and it opens up. Now, I've been practicing this a little bit for this demo, so my raster is already loaded, but it normally will open with a blank screen. So I'm just going to go to open raster, navigate to where my raster is and open that. Again, it's going to ask what coordinate reference system I'd like to use. And I'll keep it the same as the base map, 3857, pseudo Mercator, OK that. So we'll be georeferencing this to 3857, pseudo Mercator. You can zoom in and out on this image and you can interrogate it, look for some decent control points. Up here, if we hang over these tools, you can see we've got add point, delete point, or move GCP points. Now the GCP stands for ground control points and what we're effectively doing is saying that this point on our raster is going to be the same as whatever points on the map. 
So I'm going to do this really rough and ready just to give you a demo and we're going to start off up here in this kind of brown field, bang in the corner. Now normally I'd zoom in and get this a lot more precise but I just want to go quickly to show you how it works. So I've clicked there and then it asks me where I would like to get the coordinates from and I'm going to get them from the map canvas. So I can zoom in here, follow that hedgerow up and I know that it's that corner there. Okay, you really get to know your data well whilst you're doing this. Um, your area of interest becomes much more interesting. So I've got a road going over a railway here. I'll do one on that as well. Go to the map canvas, zoom out a bit. Where's my road rail crossover? It is down here. I'll just let Bing refresh. There we go. Okay, that's, and what I'd normally aim for is at least five points. Uh, generally speaking, the more points, the better, so long as they're accurate. Go for one on the roundabout. And what I try to aim for is one in each corner and one in the middle. We'll just get that point there. And then we'll probably be over to the water body for the next one, I think. Yeah, down here, just on the edge of that, from the map canvas, find the same spot. Boom, okay, that. And we just need one final point in the middle. Now it's up to you how many points you do put in. Um, it's a bit of trial and error sometimes. You might need to remove some control points. Uh, you might need to redo them, move them around, whatever. I'll just go for this field delineation coming off the track and then go into the map canvas again. Nah, it's not so clear on this one, but that's gonna do. Just for demo purposes, um, I would be a lot less slapdash in real life. Okay, so now we've got my control points, I've got five of them, I'm gonna hit the Start Georeferencing button. Now the first time you press the Start Georeferencing button, it will come up and ask you for some more info. So I'm just gonna okay that. And we've got all these fun things that we can put in. So I've been doing this, like I said, a couple of practice runs, so this is entered for me, but you may need to add all of these. We've got different transformation types. Uh, I'm going to go with thin plate spline. Spend some time, read up on these, learn what the differences are between them, but that's a bit beyond the scope of this video. Just know that there are different ways we can transform this. There are also different resampling methods, some of which may be familiar to you if you worked with rasters before. Target CRS, as I said, I'm going to keep it 3857 just to match with our layer of the Bing map and output raster I'm going to choose that to be YDAN mod okay that no compression thank you very much and I'm going to load it into QGIS when it's finished so I'm going to okay that when my mouse starts to work again there we go where is it? Why hasn't it georeferenced? It's because I need to press the start georeferencing button again. And once I do that, you can see the progress happening. Boom, it is done. So I'm going to close my georeferencing window. I'm going to save my GCP points just in case I want to come back to this later on. And I'm going to zoom out and have a look at how my picture is. Now you can see that it's a little bit skewed and that's probably because this became this came from a different CRS to begin with. It may have come from WGS84 is the most likely candidate or it might just be a warped picture because that's the way that physics works. So let's have a look. We can kind of interrogate this and have a look how good our georeferencing has been. So if we get rid of white and mod uh, it looks like it's pretty good and it looks like it might be an older image you can see here where Bing have got these kind of side roads coming around it's likely that they were put in afterwards so working with an old image here but 
It looks relatively well georeferenced. Not bad for a bit of a slapdash effort. And that's how you can georeference with QGIS. So thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Do hit the like button, it really helps. And leave a comment below. I like to talk. Happy mapping.